What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my guy, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through a big slate in the MLB tonight. Um, I'm coming off. I had, I had a good NBA slate and a good NBA win because I was very, as I put in the chat, uh, the Discord, I was very high on Boston in a big way. Uh, yesterday, just like I was very high on Philly in the first game. I'm sorry, Miami in the first game. So good NBA stuff still happening. Uh, we'll post all my my bets and my picks and all that stuff later today. Uh, Sheets, how are you doing? And uh, what do you think about this giant slate? Yeah, so so first of all, again, I, I, we talked about this um, in early in the playoffs. Uh, I went through this this whole kind of psychological profile of these. And and I really like those those game twos. Remember, we talked about yep. this, you know, when, when the home team gets the job done in the first game, mm-hmm. they can sometimes tend to be a little, uh, you know, they, they sometimes relax a little bit. And that second and that that away team just 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 really feels that they really need to put it on them so that they don't go down 0-2. And those listen, I haven't done I haven't back tested it, but mm-hmm. I've always seen instinctively seemed to work out. And Boston came just right out firing. You know what I mean? Like uh mm-hmm. And uh, we got a series yep. uh, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, the, uh, the baseball, again, I was, I was, I hope, I hope people are on it because I really nailed the early slate pretty nicely. I didn't win like uh, the GPP, but I, I, I tripled my money because mm-hmm. remember I, we, we locked in, uh, we, we locked in uh, Darvish and then I, uh, I had Baltimore. Um, which was uh, which was really really good. You know, they put up nine runs, including I got a Santander three run homer to freaking close that game out, which was which was strong. Yeah. And then in the evening slate, um, I what did I did you know I didn't have Boston, so it wasn't uh, mm-hmm. it wasn't my wasn't my day there. Um, in the NBA, um, I didn't I don't think I played the showdown. I was just in in day two of the uh, of the uh, of the other one, so I just kind of let that ride. I did play a day two slate. I did have a couple of Marcus Smart lineups, so I have with with very little else, which is a good thing, you know. So I have to, I can, I can finagle around those lineups today and see what, see how I can finish that off. But just to kind of give you guys kind of a preview again, you know, just all kinds of degeneracy all weekend long. I already put up an hour, I did an hour long video on the pre on the Preakness stakes, both both days of, of action. One of them already started today. Went through twenty races. I actually did some, some, some sheet theory. Like I talked to, I talked about using the sheets and really just backed up a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the stuff. Cause a couple of people when we lasted the video said, Hey, I really appreciate you doing that. So mm-hmm. check that out because that is not going to be free for much longer. If you want to mm-hmm. know the truth. Um, and then uh, we got NASCAR this weekend. We got MMA, we got all kinds of stuff going on and, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, Listen, you, you, it's, it's good. We're, we're, we're really good because Bobby kind of takes the weekend. I want to say takes them off, but he's yeah. like not as active on the weekends and I'm like everywhere on the weekend. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get everything done for you guys. And hopefully you guys continue to, um, to do well. I will also say that the, the level of, of, of discourse in the discord is really ramped up. I mean, the people that are on there are really putting out some good questions and some good observations and things like that. So, I really, it's, listen, it's been a long way since a couple of months ago when like 40% of the people on there were just trolling us. You know what I mean? <laughs> now we're really starting to get a good, you know, a good sense of, you know, and it's a kind of an intelligent sounding community. You know what I mean? And, and yes. Yeah. That's one thing I noticed, you know, cause I do belong to other discords and other, other stuff. And it's kind of interesting to see how like different, different sites, it's kind of different, take on different characters, you know, not that one's like better than the other. Like there's some sites that the, everybody's like, you know, like flexing and pumping up and like, and like getting into it. And that's one thing, you know, another, and other sites are really analytical. And I think ours is a kind of a developing into, into mm-hmm. a good combination of, of, of people kind of supporting each other. Yet at the other hand, like, like, uh, got some good analytical minds in there. So I'm curious to see how it develops over the next year or so. I'm, I'm kind of psyched about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I feel the same way. I think it's, I think it's a great, uh, a great channel. And I really, really appreciate everybody's in there. And if you aren't in there, jump on in, I will attach a link to this video as always. And uh, with that said, let's jump into this giant slate. Um, it is going to be a crazy, you know, a lot of stuff going on, as you mentioned, the Preakness uh, being part of it uh, this weekend. So let's, uh, let's get our, let's, let's pat our bankroll tonight. So <laughs> um, let's start off with the, the first game I have here is the Tampa Bay Baltimore. Is that right? Yes. Tampa Bay Baltimore game. Yeah. And Sheets, what do you, why don't you tell me like a little bit what, what you're doing? Yeah. So first today. of all, this is an enormous slate. So, so yeah. I try, like I, like usual, I try to make the, the, the big slate small, but 
I will say overall that this slate's tough to do that. I mean, there's a lot of options, both mm-hmm. hitting and pitching. Um, and just as a little preview, you know, that, that, that's kind of where I'm at. So if I, if I feel a little hedgy, it's, you know, look, sometimes I'll put out a video where I, I make a 10 game slate and I do the whole thing in, in four minutes because I know exactly where I'm going. This is just not going to be one of them. Um, but for lack of anything else, I'm, I'm off of this game. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not getting to really any of the pitching. And I'm just kind of like ranking my, my stacks and whether it be from raw or for value, I'm not getting to either of these stacks either. Not that you can't play them, but I just have to cut off somewhere. I'm just not getting to either side of this team. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, ex- I, I'm sort of exactly with you. I like to do that on these big slates. Um, if I had to say anything, I, I do think if I was playing 150 that I would have a, a some number, I don't know how many it would be exactly of Tampa Bay. Um, Wells with a bad bullpen, 86 degrees in Baltimore, wind blowing out, et cetera. But I don't feel like there's anything. I, I don't know if this is what I want to end up doing, but I do have Tampa Bay as a, you know, an, an outside potential as a team that I could look at um, specifically Franco Ramirez, Rosarena, I guess you could say Choi as well and FanDuel. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I think on this slate, I probably, end the, I probably end up staying away from it. Um, uh as of right now but i i definitely think i don't think it's like that i don't think it's a bad idea i just uh it's just not i think it's too big a slate basically um i will start off the the uh the next game the dodgers and phillies just because uh you know as i guess the dodger person uh, this should be a game we we probably should avoid i guess uh suarez we've seen what lefties have done to the dodgers this year all of that stuff It's just always hard for me. You put the Dodgers in Philly. I mean, it's a huge stadium upgrade, 78 degrees, wind blowing out to left center. It's hard for me not to have a little bit of interest. I just don't, it's like like Suarez is a good pitcher. And honestly, I think you like, you could make a case for Suarez, even against these Dodgers. Well, actually I should say, especially against these Dodgers when how they, how they've struggled with the lefty, the lefties this year. Um, But I'm probably going to end up having this a little bit on the back burner Although the Dodgers at low ownership is always something that intrigues me. Again, a huge stadium upgrade playing in Philly versus LA and uh, the warm weather and the wind uh, affects me. So if I did make a Dodger stack, I think you, as I always say, you can include the lefties, but you don't need to do it to get different on this slate. You can, you can get there. You're going to be different enough. If you just play the Dodgers, I probably won't do it. Suarez is good, but I'm definitely open to it. And it certainly I'm open to, guys like Betts Turner as one ops, if you ended up just getting there or maybe even as like a mini stack, but overall kind of a big slate to, to want to go crazy with this game. So in an attempt to, I, I want to stay out of my lane with this, with this take, but I figured I would just ask you, you you've, you've been, you've from time to time mentioned that the types of um, maybe this is overthinking it, but the types of lefties particularly that are bat, that are tough for the Dodgers are kind of like the, 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 the junk lefties um, is, is I, I get the sense that Suarez is not that type of guy though. Um, so is it possible that, that he's, this is a lefty that's not quite within that, you know, that Dodger kryptonite um, or is, or is he that kind of guy? He, he, I mean, yes, you're, you're right in this, in some sense, but at the same time, it's, it's almost becoming like all lefty starters. It's not all okay. versus all lefties. But it is. It does seem as the starters they just can't quite put the big game up. The one thing that is going for that I that I would like for the Dodgers here is they did. This is the you know they Suarez's last outing. He faced. He pitched in LA. He actually was pretty dominant in that game. He gave ended up giving him three runs. I think it was because of a home run that he gave up. But he uh, seven innings, six strikeouts. He had in that game. He was really good against us. And I, I the only thing the thing that's just really appealing is the Dodgers at low ownership, which we don't very often get. Um, I think I probably am going to probably talk myself into a stack if I'm not careful, but he's a, he's a good enough. He's better than all these lefties that have, have sort of, we haven't really been able to get to. And I, he, you know, he's got good off speed stuff, but he can also, he can also, you know, bring the heat too. I, I'm, I'm just very up in the air with what I want to do here. Cause I'm always going to want to play the Dodgers when they're low owned against a non top 20 pitcher in baseball. But Suarez is probably a top 60, top 50 pitcher in baseball. So I'm just sort of struggling a little bit, and it's a big slate. But I do love the idea of the Dodgers and low ownership. Uh, whether I can pull the trigger by the end of it, we'll, we'll figure it out in this video, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I have my, my stacks down to, and again, what are there, 25, 25 possibles or whatever it is. Um, 
I mean, I have it down. I mean, I just, just for lack of anything else, I, I, I made, uh, I have like nine teams that I'm, um, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm considering nine teams that I have, I do have the Dodgers as one as like my ninth, you know, so, so they're in there. Um, yeah. and at low ownership, I mean, that's, that's certainly, uh, that's certainly, uh, appealing. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to keep my eye on it. And if I get to them, I'm not going to complain How about that. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I, I totally agree with all that. Um, Hey, you're in New York. What is the, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't think there was going to be, this is sheets around here somewhere. Stays. <laughs> um, it's, it does seem a little cloudy. Um, I, I didn't get the, I have to get the full sheets update on the weather. Um, but fortunately or unfortunately, I'm, uh, the only part of this that it would affect is for me is the hitting. Um, I, this was like really interesting. So, so the Yankees just played, just went up against Keiko recently. All right. And, you know, it was weird. I was watching the game. I was actually, at, at, you know, I was at a restaurant that you know, we were waiting to sit down. I was watching the game up there and it seemed as though the Yankees were up for like an hour. Every time they were at the play, every time it was their turn to bat. So I wasn't really paying much attention. So I just presumed that they had like seven runs, you know, because yeah. they were just never not hitting. And then I look and they, they, didn't, they didn't get anything. Right. You know, it, it's, it's, it's like the ultimate Keiko, you know, like it was weird, but you like walk guys, um, which I don't usually see. Right. Uh, maybe they just got unlucky. I, I don't know, but I, I wouldn't push my luck. You know, like, mm-hmm. if the Yankees are, you know, if they, this game does go and the Yankees are available coming off of a, uh, Last time they played, they got freaking owned by him pretty much. Um, I would, I would go right back to that. Um, if they uh, look, they're probably going to be owned because now, now I mean, the Yankees, Yankees are always owned anyway. I'm not say always, but they always have that Yankee whatever, and they've been they've been doing pretty well. So I to 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 bank on Keuchel keeping the Yankees restrained two games in a row is asking a lot. So I mm-hmm. would. Um, I definitely put the Yankees near the top of the overall list. Uh, they're not the greatest value in the world, but um, uh, if this game goes, it's hard to, re- it's hard to resist. I'm not, I'm not getting to any Cortez at 10, six. Um, so for me, it's either Yankees or rain out or, or nothing. probably. Here. Yeah. And, and, and I think for what it's worth the game, from what I'm looking at, it probably plays. Okay. You have winds blowing in a little, it's like 68 degrees, I guess, in New York tonight. Um, yeah. With winds blowing in a little bit about 10 miles an hour from right center just a little thing to consider if you're, if they become a little too chalky, I, I think it'll be judge LeMahieu and potentially Stanton. Although I actually think people keep not playing Stanton and uh, it's amazing. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a mistake. Um, the guys put up over 20 and four out of the last eight games. Um, and had, including a, a 43 fantasy. I mean, he's just had some, he's just, he's hitting home runs right now. He goes through these, these streaks and when he gets hot, he gets really hot. So I am, I'm probably just going to consider the Yankees as a potential stack. And I do think Judge and LeMahieu get get owned. I, I'm not sure how the rest of it. You think out. you think people are going to play Judge like that much at 6100? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, his overall numbers this year are just out of this world. Like so, um, yeah. against lefties in general, like with him, you, you know, his biggest weakness is strikeouts. You have a non-strikeout pitcher. It just everything sort of lines up for him to be a great play as a one-off. So I I do think that uh, even at at, at 6100, I think that he ends up popular. Um, okay in this spot. That's my, just my personal guess. Um, what do we think about this next one? Because this is, this is a tricky one. You yeah, have so, a guy yeah. who's good. No, no, no. It's, I, it's um, th- there's something appealing about the idea of playing Luis Castillo at 7,300. There's something, I mean, appealing about potentially stacking against him because we have seen wildly different variations of, of what Castillo can be. And he can get, he can get wild. He can get, he gives up hard contact, the strikeouts. I mean, he's barely pitched this year, but started falling off a little bit at times last year. I'm sort of up in the air with this game. I think I probably end up staying mostly away uh, outside of, I do think Ryu is in play, even though he hasn't been good this year, we have to treat Cincinnati as the team that they are and they're awful. Uh, so anybody against Cincinnati is always going to be in play for me. Uh, Ryu, maybe not the most exciting play, but I'm a little bit interested in that. I'm a little bit interested in Toronto, but nothing I have strong conviction on. I think I would prefer taking a chance with the Dodgers or the Yankees instead of Toronto, but I certainly wouldn't fault anybody for playing Toronto. Cause if you get past Castillo too, 
you have a terrible bullpen and you have a low-owned Toronto team that fits the same, like the Dodgers, Toronto, and the Yankees, when they're low-owned, those are the teams I'm going to be the most pressed to, to, to really try to attack. So, um, yeah, so, so Castillo, Castillo has been, you know, he was, he was out. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and he's, he's kind of working his way back. Well, I shouldn't say that he came right out with 90 pitches, both of his starts. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would rather wait before taking a shot at Castillo. If I was pitching him, if I was going to play him a pitcher, I, I'd, I'd want a good game honestly out of him before taking a shot on him against Toronto on a 12 game slate. You yeah, know? it seems right. Uh, um, but I, I definitely think that, that your, that your, your, your logic on Toronto is just pretty, is pretty good. You know, it's, 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 they have great hitters and, and Castillo is, 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 is a wild card right now until he, until he proves otherwise. And mm-hmm. no one's going to play these guys. And I, I, I can't argue with it. You know what I mean? So, so, I, I would certainly include them in my mix. They weren't there at the beginning, but I'm, I would totally make sure to get, like you said, get a, get a 10%, or something like that, you know, almost mm-hmm. every slate, you know? Um, and I'm not going to get to Ryu. I'm not, I'm certainly not going to get Cincinnati. I got, I, got all, I got all my runs out of Cincinnati in one game for the whole season. So I'm not playing. <laughs> I don't need to play them again. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of agree with you. I, I'm inclined to stay away, but if I get to 10% Toronto or something like that, I, I I'm not going to, I'm not going to pitch. Yep, exactly. That makes perfect sense. All right, let's take a, let's go over to the next one. Uh, Detroit and Cleveland. This is an interesting game actually, because in terms of like weather, this looks like a game. I mean, you got almost 20 mile an hour winds blowing out to center 84 degrees in Cleveland. Really? But I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how to click that button. I mean, Jose Ramirez on his own is just a great play. Um, Always. But he, tonight is no different. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, Scooble has been pretty much just unbelievable this year. But yeah, I think I, I guess it's I guess it's mostly a stay away for me. Um, I'm trying to find things to do. I don't think it's. I actually don't think Savale is the worst play in the world. Um, and it's definitely going to be off the board. But do we need to get that creative? It's a 12 game slate. Probably a stay away, but great hitting weather and uh, definitely don't mind if I end up with any one offs or if I end up with like a two or three man stack from either Cleveland or Detroit, just not targeting it. I have Savali as the best point per dollar play on the whole slate, and 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 it's ridiculous. I mean, he's like you said, he's the wind's blowing out. Just look, he's given us up six earned runs every game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. You know yeah. what I mean? His, his ERA is like a thousand. Um, yep. So the other thing, by the way, I'm getting as my third best value stack on the board is Detroit, which, and both of them, both of those takes make sense. Um, mm-hmm. Especially the Detroit one, the Cleveland one, not so much. <laughs> I mean, the, the, right. the, the Savale one, not so much. And, you know, I remember we tried this before. I remember you even, you even played Savale, I think in one of your big ones last time, because yep. we couldn't resist the price. And, um, uh, Am I a glutton? I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. <laughs> I really might be. Uh, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, but I but look, I, I he's cheap and boy oh boy, it's a, it's a rough one. But I he is right now right rates right now to be the best point per dollar play on the slate for me. Um, I just I can't imagine me having to play him though. That's let's put it that way. And Detroit, uh, I do have as a good value stack, but I wouldn't play them unless like for some reason Savali got to be chalky, which he won't be. I can't see that happening. Right. And maybe Detroit maybe, gets maybe ownership. It happen. You know what? Maybe, maybe, it could. maybe Detroit gets ownership if the wind is really blowing out 20 miles an hour. You know, that's 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 yeah. also possible. Yep. So so oh, that's tough slate, man. I don't know. And I'm not getting I'm not getting to Cleveland and I'm not getting to Scooble. So for me, I'm probably gonna end up doing one of those two things. Uh, I'm probably gonna either take Savali or Detroit. Uh, I don't know which. <laughs> I, I think both both those things make sense. Yeah, yeah, I I, I completely get it. <laughs> um, it's ridiculous, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a weird slate. I, I get. I, it's just. I mean, and that's baseball in general. I mean, too. Like you can you can have stance on these guys, and at the same time want to pick against yeah. them. I, I I mean, again, on a smaller slate, this next game would fall f- very highly into that category for Speaking me. Speaking of which, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like you have Robbie Ray. I mean. I actually think you could make you could even go so far as to make an argument for Waka. Probably the wrong slate. I'm not going to do it. 
but it's probably worth, you know, he's, he's been solid for his price and fair enough, but Robbie Ray at 8K certainly has the upside to, to win you everything. Um, now, he also has a huge bust path potential in this type of a matchup. And I, 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 I probably am going to end up playing some Robbie Ray. You've got, you know, it's only 66 degrees, but it is blowing out pretty hard to left field in, in Boston. Um, I probably am going to play some Ray and I'm probably going to have some JD Martinez, Kike Hernandez, Trevor story, those three guys specifically. So I, I like the mini Boston stack a little bit, as well as having some interest in Ray. I mean, you, uh, obvi- obviously, Mr. Sheets will not be playing Trevor's story. Oh, because he had a big game yesterday. He had 800 fantasy points in one game. Oh, my, oh my God. I didn't even realize it was that big. No wonder I <laughs> yeah. didn't win anything last night. I didn't even mentioned him. I didn't even play him. I mean, he had, Jesus. He, he had the same amount of fantasy points as, as Marcus Smart. I mean, like, it was... It was uh, <laughs> as Marcus uh, Smart in the captain mode uh, with the bonus points, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, wow. So, uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's so, um, that's, uh, that's that. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I, I agree. I think Robbie Ray is always a tournament play. Um, uh, and I have him on my list of, of pitchers to consider. Uh, I sort of like that's a little different, but if you have it in you to play, if I have, if you have it in you to play Castillo. For example, I definitely have it in me to play Ray. Um, yep. Yeah. So I, I, those two are very similar in a weird way. So yeah. So I, I like. Um, I also you talk about Waka. I have Seattle as one of my top values. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know if Waka is the type of guy. Is he the guy? Is he the? He is he the guy that you don't want to attack? Or see the guy that 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 you can? Because I, I kind of like Seattle here a little. No, bit. I mean you can attack him. He. He's only given up a couple home runs this year. Um, okay. has, a, has been prone to, to home runs in the past, but again, it's it's hard to judge early in the season, and it doesn't get overly crazy wild. Although he's been a little more wild this year, um, I, I get I I like some of the individual plays. I like Ty France. Um, I like JP Crawford. I like Jesse Winker. So I I could see getting to a little a little stack here for uh, for these guys. I like Julio Rodriguez. Uh, somewhat Suarez. So I, I, I could get to a stack of the Mariners. I'm just probably not going to make them a primary stack for me. Um, I think both these teams suit me better a little bit as mini stacks, just because that both teams are good. You're going to get, you know, decent bullpen arms. Um, I know that last night, you know, Boston scored a bazillion runs or whatever, but it was basically Trevor's story. Just, I mean, that, that, I, that's, that's one of the best fantasy games I've ever seen. Um, Three home runs. Can, can, can I tell you something? I think the last time I saw a swirl like that was was Trevor Story. <laughs> yeah, probably in Colorado. I don't know if you were. Let me tell you something. I don't. I don't really watch the full baseball games. I, I'll still never forget this. I happened to have been watching a Colorado game like a couple of years ago. Maybe it was last season, season before. And Trevor Story hit three home runs, and and they were three of the most ridiculous like bombs I've ever seen. He hit like a five hundred foot home run with one hand. In Colorado, yeah. it was the most ridiculous freaking thing. If you look it up, it'll be on YouTube. And and they must have had a. Actually, I think they might have been all solo home runs, so I don't think he got the same amount of fantasy points. Right. But um, but uh, that <laughs> Trevor Story. You didn't also have seven RBIs, a stolen base, was four for four, and had a yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, like as opposed to like 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 Altuve was four for five last night and had like fourteen fantasy points. Like yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy when you get a guy. That's literally you could win a. That was more points than I think some of my teams had. Right. Um, it's nuts. Um, all right. Texas and, and Houston. Um, basically, uh, look, we go here through we go. Look, Here we go. Here we go again. Right. Does he ever face a team that, that we don't just want to pick on? I feel like he faces Houston every time, but the truth is he just faces a good offense. He I'm faces just a, team like, face a team like Houston every time. <laughs> is, is, yeah, exactly. Is, is he just like, do we have to just come? Are we? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to play he's, him. He's literally the best. I mean, he's he's the best. zero home runs this season. <laughs> Everybody, all they do is play, play people play against him. He goes yeah. six or seven every time. He puts up, you know, his, his K rate is not great, but reasonable. He got seven strikeouts against the Red Sox. I know. And, he, and he's put up, look, his fantasy games, 21, 20, 20, 19, 25, 25. I mean, I'm not going to play him, but I'm just throwing it out there. Is this the time? And, and you know what? What's weird is that I actually get the feeling, as usual, um, 
that Houston is going to end up being one of the, it's not going to be that high owned. I mean, but one of the non Coors owned stacks, because I think Altuve is going to be popular. I think Bregman's going to be popular. I don't know how that suits the rest of the lineup, but I do think those guys on their own make, you know, are going to make sense to people. I'm just going to keep pointing out what I always do. It, it, it would be a very off brand for me to stack against Martin Perez, especially on a big slate. So I am not going to do it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pass on that hitting that environment as well. Um, yeah. What about, uh, what about Javier? Yeah. So that's an interesting one, right? Like it, the price is not ideal. The leashes for these guys are not great. I just think that I probably end up skipping it. I like the okay. K rate and I, and I like, you know, he's, I think he's got good stuff, but I don't think I'm going to do it on this slate at 8,800. I get it. And there's not a lot of pictures to like love. It's really weird. Like we had the, yeah. the four game slate. The Was it yesterday or was it the day before? No, the day before where, where literally every ace in baseball basically was pitching. Right. Against each other, and it was really now you got 37 game. pitches, and none of them are going to score 20 fantasy points, <laughs> right? That's I think that's a really good possibility. So, I'm probably just like completely off this game, I guess. Um, with the exception of I always will play a low owned Corey Seager because no one yeah. plays him, and nope. you know, I, I just think it's worth taking a, a chance on that guy. So, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Um, Minnesota, Kansas City, um. Didn't quite get to Smelter, but I was thinking about it. Um, aside from that, I do have Minnesota as listed as my actual, my top uh, overall value stack, if that means anything. Um, do, are you going to need to do that? Maybe not, but I definitely do have Minnesota as, 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 a, as a good team to target. Um, uh, so for me, it's Minnesota and maybe squint smelter if I have to. So, which I probably don't. So for me, I do like Minnesota and and the little smelts. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what to do here, to be honest with you. Cause I don't, I mean, this, this is how I feel about a lot of these games. And this, this is a, it's, a, it's a big slate, but I'm finding it as a strange slate. And yeah, I think that we're going to get to a Coors game that probably isn't going to play. Um, oh, is that true? It's 100% precipitation from 7 p.m. Oh, to 1 wow. a.m. Okay. I've never seen anything like that, but I've got to double check to make sure that's actually accurate because that's uh, okay. that seems crazy. I just think, it, okay, so it was 87 degrees in Colorado yesterday. Today it's 32 and snowing. What? And, what the hell? And the wind's blowing in. I, I, this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be very weird, but I guess what I'm leading up to is that don't believe in any of the early ownerships that you see because that game being off the board is going to change a lot. Yes. Um, so I think the smelter thing is, is I, it's, I just never like would have thought of it coming out, but I 5,100, I think I'd rather play Savale at 58. Um, I guess, but I get it. I mean, one thing I'd mention though, is Daniel Lynch might be the, the guy you want to play here. He's given up maybe right? runs maybe. In three of his last five games. Um, he's got a five and a half K prop for a guy who's 6,700. That's pretty damn good. Um, yeah. I, I, I am open to both sides of, of this thing. I do think if you're going to talk about Minnesota, like I really like Buxton and I like, I, I think Correa, Sanchez, Blanco are all fine. Um, Buxton against the lefty, you're going to, I'm a sucker for, and then you're probably going to get the 2K garlic. So I think the stack ends up getting overowned. Yeah, you're um, right. Yeah. But I do think that it's, uh, it certainly makes some sense. It's weird to have an overowned stack on a 12 game slate with only a team with only a 4.1 run total. That is not, not a great run total to, to be targeting on a 12 game slate as a full five man stack. And that is something that I definitely take into account. So you got wins also blowing in from left field. I, I think I'm more on the Lynch side, but of course, garlic as a one-off, any of these guys as one-offs I, I'm fine with. Um, I just don't, don't feel excited about trying to pick on Lynch, especially because you want to pick on him with righties and all those righties are going to be hitting into 10 mile an hour wins and it's only 69 degrees and then not a great hitters park. So I, uh, I probably am going to be, uh, you know, I'll probably be well below the field on the, any, any twins nonsense. And I think I might just play Lynch as a little bit of a pivot to what I think will end up being one of the, the chalkier, at least mini stacks. Yeah. Uh, this next game I think is, 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 I mean, probably worth doing. I mean, you have Fetty on the Washington Scott side and then you could play, you know, Christian Yelich, Narvaez even, or, or, um, you get not I keep calling him Vogelbach. Uh, Tellez. Um, 
Uh, I think Milwaukee's really in play here. I have them. I have them really high on the list, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I've been. I've, and I listen. You know, everybody's uh, has their their favorites or whatever. I just, I just had a lot of luck playing Yelich. Like whenever I have him, he seems to be, and he gets he gets those amazing fantasy things like you know sometimes when you really need it and there's like two outs and you're oh man it's not even like you have any leeway it's not like this not even like if this guy gets out there's someone else you need him to get a hit with two outs and he gets it for me so so i i i i'm I'm kind of i'm kind of leaning towards milwaukee you know again fetty fetty is someone that everybody always plays again so i do feel as though milwaukee's probably going to be owned as a result um so yeah definitely have to consider that but i think milwaukee's fully in play here. Um, I don't play Eric Lauer. I don't play him at 10-4. Um, I'm not really getting to that. So for me, it's Milwaukee or nothing. Yeah, um, I, I I actually agree about Milwaukee to some extent. Um, the value isn't ideal. I mean, by the way, I, I will just point out that Lauer has been like incredible this year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've seen like every bit of talent I heard about this kid from forever. I feel like this is the finally the time that we're seeing it. Um, I still think that like the amount of home runs he gives up is pretty astronomical. Um, and the amount of hard contact, they don't make contact, but when they do, it goes a long ways. So I will, uh, I will go out and say again, Juan Soto fits as a, as a one of a, an incredible one off that will be like 1% owned. Uh, I'm good with the, the Milwaukee stack. I think that is, that is the first stack that we've come to that I really feel strongly that I think is, is, is in play. Um, Something about it, though, it's, the slate is I expected to like more. I think I'm going to revisit the, the, those Yankee Dodger situations in Toronto that we talked about earlier, because I don't like a whole lot else. And for, for Milwaukee to be my favorite or one of my favorites doesn't feel like right. And Milwaukee's also priced up too a little bit. So, uh, yeah, certainly I'm OK with uh, with the Milwaukee stack. And right now I have them as the stack I've, you know, I've sort of liked the most, but I'm not all that excited about it. I mean, we, we're going to have no teams other than the Yankees with a five run total. If that Colorado game gets postponed and I would be, I mean, if you're, if it's 32 and snowing, it's pretty likely to get postponed. That is my guess. Could you, could you pause for just a sec? Yes, sir. Yeah. So anyway, just as, as I said, so, you know, before we jump into the Mets in Colorado, I mean, like I said, don't buy any ownerships that you see early in the day because this game, I mean, I just don't know how it plays. Um, should it play? If it does, no, they're not going to play this. Game. Even if they did play it, you know what I would do in that kind of temperature? I would be playing these. I, I mean, you have two guys who have, I mean, look, I know we've seen the worst of, of uh, Mar- Marquez a little bit at this season until his last couple of starts. He started finding himself a little bit again. Um, I would be open to taking both of these pitchers in this kind of, in these kind of conditions. Should this game play? I don't see that happening. Um and I'm probably just, you know, even if the game was playing, I probably am off the hitting anyway. And I, I would honestly side with the pitching. I think both these pitchers have enough upside at their prices to get it done. But I'm, I'm, I just don't see this game as likely to play. And I'm just going to. Yeah, that's way too risky for me to play anybody from this game. Um, yeah. So I'm going to pass. All right. Let's talk about Oakland and the Angels. Um, not a not not, you know, not, not the weather we get sometimes. I mean, I was in Marina Del Rey last night and. And man, it was cold. Um, it's going to be 66 today in, uh, in Anaheim. You do have a little bit of wind blowing out, nothing special. I think Silseth is a guy who I absolutely want to get ahead of the field on in general, and I want to just be ahead of the, the curb on this, this kid. So I will definitely play some Silseth. Uh, he's, he's one of the pitchers. Again, it's weird. It's one of those slates not to love, not, don't love a lot of pitching, don't love a lot of the hitting for a, for a big slate. Um, I think Otani and Trout are, are, are strong plays of, as, as a two man. I I'm fine. If you want to do the stack, it's really expensive. Like I said, not ideal hitting conditions. Um, we've seen the angels have, you know, they're, they're really good. They, they, they can get hot. Um, but Blackburn is, is good enough to where I don't particularly want to go out of my way picking on a guy who's given up only one home run this season on a 12 game slate and who doesn't walk anybody. So it, it's a, uh, it's still something pretty much nothing else for me, except for maybe Trout and Otani. Yeah, the only thing I worry about, and Silsip I have is my second best uh, point per dollar play. The only thing I worry about is his, you know, this is the second game, and it's the second game against the same team. Mm -hmm. Um, So I worry about that a little bit, and so I got to see how ownership kind of plays into that. 
Um, and I, I originally, I had Manai in my projection. So what the hell do I know for Oakland? <laughs> he, so was, guess, he was in the, in my initial projections, but yeah. then I'm looking at it now and yeah. you got Blackbird. Yeah, now it's Blackbird. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, so I have to obviously change that. And, uh, and Blackbird, even last year, I thought he was not that bad. And he's, 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 he's doing better this year, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe he's in play. Um, uh, possible. I mean, there's not a lot of pitching on the slate. Um, so Silt, I agree with you for Silsip. Um, and I do have a little bit of, 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 uh, interest in the angels. Um, but like you said, I mean, he doesn't really give up that much. So Mm -hmm. a huge slate, if anything, maybe I just take one or two of these guys. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's that same page here. Um, and we get to another. No, oh, sorry. Oh, not, so no, I did have Manaya. Yeah, so Manaya Manaya is is yeah. yeah. I, I had the same exact thing happen, Sheets. I was totally so on the funny. board with this, and it just took me a minute as well. So, so um, weird. Speaking of though, Sean Manaya, like he is going to be one of the more popular plays of, the, of this on the slate. Um, he's he's been good. I don't know like that it. he's awesome but, enough to where we need to play him, uh, but there isn't a whole lot of pitching to like, so he's going to end up getting a lot of ownership because of it. And then you've got Eunice, who I have said for a long time, even before he was a, a giant, is actually a better real life pitcher than people think. So I'm 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 okay I'm okay with that. I just probably not going to do it. I'm I'm probably just staying away from this game entirely, to be honest with you. Yeah, I like Manaya. Um, right, and and I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm a little. Uh, I guess I am a little recency biased. I'm like staring at that last game, and I'm like. I don't, I'd love for someone to be able to put me a score like that up today. Um, that'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but go, you know, San Francisco is not the worst team in the world, right? <laughs> so it's that's tough. Um, but you know, Atlanta's not bad either, and he stuck twelve of them out. Yep. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I I, I kind of think that um, well, maybe in the end, this is this is just who you're supposed to play. I mean, I I don't know. I have to I have to think about that. But if you tell me he's going to be the highest owned, how high is he going to be owned though? I mean, how many? I would I bet know. he's somewhere in the 30s. Oh, then I don't know. Like, uh, I don't uh, care about taking a guy in the 30s as a pitcher if I really like him. But like, right. this is a guy who, in all of his starts, it, it's crazy because his strikeout rate, his K rate has been great, which is all we really care about. But he's it's not like he's not giving up runs. It's not like he's not walking people. It's not like he's not giving up hard contact. Um, he's been giving up all of these things. Right. And he had, he's still putting up, you know, really solid numbers. I will probably play a little bit of him but i i'm it's only because i don't feel really strongly and, and maybe this is the kind of slate where i play lynch and savale or something like that and get yeah really because i don't yeah, but to, any, but to get to get to what though i mean well well the, the yankees are expensive um no, that's true the dodgers are are well they're going to be low owned they're, they're going to be they're expensive um yeah. so i guess that would be you know we can go back to our yankees dodgers stacks which by the way you know if you want a combo stack that that, that seems to work out pretty often it's a pretty good one um uh, I think it might be an argument here to be playing some San Francisco. I know you don't need that extreme leverage. I mean, Wilma Flores on his own is cheap. Um, Darren Ruff, Austin Slater, those guys. Uh, Manaya does, you know, g- give up a lot of power in general. And he, I mean, he's, look, his last games, three earned runs, three earned runs, three earned runs, six earned runs. Like he's, it's not like he's been untouchable, even in this, this good run. So yeah. I, I'm open to, to, to the Giants as a get weird stack. I just don't know if I need to get that weird. The problem is, who do I feel that strongly about? Am I going to, I may end up playing Detroit by the end of this slate. I mean, it's a very strange slate. I might go back to the original game, which I, you know, again, if it came up last and it was Tampa Bay and Baltimore, I think maybe I am going to take the Tampa Bay shots. And I think Tampa Bay is going to end up being much more owned than they're being projected for. Um, but it's, it's a tough, I mean, I've got Tampa Bay. Now I've got the Yankees and Dodgers because I'm crossing off cores and right. uh, because the weather even if it even if it played and 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 then Milwaukee um, with mini mini stacks of Seattle, mini stacks of Boston, mini stacks of uh, Minnesota or Toronto, but I, I none nobody's like astronomically standing out, so I will probably go with uh, the better offenses and and the Dodgers, Yankees with uh, you know then some of the Tampa Bay and Milwaukee. Yeah, I actually really might be. I actually game. might be uh, available for a, a rare Friday live Ooh. tonight. Um, with a 12 game slate, that'd be kind of cool if we could both do that. Mm-hmm. And, um, got the NBA, got hockey, got all kinds of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm trying to make it, um, 
but overall, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a slate at which which as Bobby mentioned, I mean, all the ownerships are going to be different um, because that that game. I think that game might get postponed by the time we even upload this video. You know, That's so, probably true. Yeah. Um, so and 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 so watch watch all of that, and we'll we'll we'll. I think I think the slate will be a little clearer. Um, uh, maybe <laughs> by, by, by the time we go on at six, but we'll see. Yep. Um, oh boy, I need Adam Scott to make this cut. And that's really frustrating me because I have like, I literally have Fleetwood everywhere except for in my one, one of my two eighty eight eighty eights, and I've got freaking Adam Scott in there and uh, it's going to come. And it's going to be four, right? Or maybe even three. Oh, I think it'll be four or five at least. I think five okay. is probably, I, I'm starting to lean more towards five personally. Okay. Um, it's th this has been a rough day for, for people so far, yeah. um, with the exception of a few guys, other than you know the Aaron Wises and and uh, and Joaquin Neiman, who is another one. The Chileans, man, they showed up. Love it. That's I love great. It. Hopefully, love it continues. It. Anyway, uh, good luck. Oh, for what's worth the pitching, I have uh, not in any order because I, I really feel like all of these guys are taking chances. So I might just play the low owned ones. Uh, Ryu, Savale, Silseth, Manaya, Ray, and Lynch uh, is what I've got for right now. All right. We will see right. you uh, hopefully at six. Yeah. Good luck, everybody.